In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your valve cover gasket on this Toyota Corolla. It's right on top of the engine, so let's get started. To start, we have to remove the engine cover, for which you can use a 10 millimeter socket, and remove the two mounting nuts. This one came off with the stud, that's fine, that happens sometimes. Just pull the engine cover up and out. With the engine cover off, we can access everything we need here. And the first thing I like to do is to unplug and remove the ignition coils. There are four of them. Unplug the electrical connector by pressing down on the locking tab and pulling it off of here. Sometimes these little tabs break, so be careful. And if yours do, just make sure you have a way to resecure them, whether you wire tie them or whatever it is. But a lot of times these do break. So set these aside. Now use a 10 millimeter socket and unbolt all the ignition coils. And when you pull them out, I like to put them back in the cylinder that they came from. This is number one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna put them in order. This is just a personal preference of mine. There's a bolt and a nut holding down this wiring harness. Let's take both of those off, 10 millimeter also. Oh, this one, the whole stud came out, that's fine. Let's squeeze this clamp and remove this vacuum hose that's on here. Set that aside. Now we can get this out of the way. Another vacuum hose at the front. Move that one aside as well. On the front passenger side of the valve cover here, this harness is supposed to be attached to this bracket, but it's broken. So for me, um, I don't have to do anything to remove this one, but I do have to remove this bracket. Basically I have to free up the stud so the valve cover can slide up and off. So I'm gonna remove this 10 millimeter nut, take the bracket off, set this aside. And on the back side of the valve cover right there, you'll see a similar looking retainer for this harness and this is what the front one should look like also you have this little tab that if you press down it lets it go and slides off of that bracket and once you push it out of the way you'll see this bracket is also held on with a 10 millimeter retainer so remove that and safely remove the bracket right by the oil filler cap there's another bracket this is going to be the last one that we have to unbolt 10 millimeter nut Pull the bracket up. This one is still attached to a harness, so it's gonna be a little tricky, but pull it up and just move it out of the way. If you want to, you can take the harness off of it. Same type of clip, pull it down. Okay, set this out of the way. And now we have several 10 millimeter fasteners all around the valve cover. There are three bolts down the center, one, two, and three, and then several around the perimeter one of which is gonna be this large stud here which secures the engine cover. I'm gonna start in the middle and then just work my way around. The ones that came off from the center are not all the same. These two that go here and here are longer. This one that goes on the end is shorter, so keep that in mind. And then there's a bolt here and then this stud on the edges, we already disconnected the nuts and the brackets. This is actually a 12 millimeter cutout. Now there are three more bolts left on the back side. There they are, and that's it. That's all that holds the valve cover down. If you had any debris around this area, this would be a great time to get rid of it so that it doesn't fall into the engine. All right, now you can pull up on the valve cover. It's most likely gonna be a little stuck just from the rubber gasket being on there for a while. You can very gently pry it, but there isn't a lot of areas to pry on, so I like to take a small rubber mallet and just, as I lift up, give it a couple taps. There we go. Don't use anything else other than a rubber mallet because this will crack. Oh, there you go. There's your valve cover. And there's your valve cover gasket. It's still stuck on here. So carefully peel it up. If it's very old like this one, it's most likely going to be brittle and it's gonna break. You don't want any small pieces breaking inside of the engine. So just be careful. And there we go. The outside 
well, the whole thing's supposed to be one piece, but like I said, sometimes they break into multiple pieces. There it is. And all we have to do now is some cleaning. Take a rag and remove any debris that's around the edge here. Wipe it off towards the outside, not obviously into the engine. Do the same for the spark plug holes. And for this, it's most likely just gonna be some oil. So just wipe it off, make sure it's nice and clean. Don't spray any brake parts cleaner in here. Don't try to clean anything inside. And then we're gonna clean inside the valve cover here where the rubber seals sit, as well as around the edge where it sits here. You want it degreased, you want it nice and clean, no debris. I'm gonna start with just a dry, clean rag. No brake parts cleaner yet. I just wanna remove all of the debris that's here. Now I'm gonna put brake parts cleaner on my rag and degrease this whole surface. Perfect. Now let's clean the valve cover. For this, you can either use a little plastic brush in here or your rag if it fits, or you can just spray some brake parts cleaner, but don't spray a lot. You just wanna spray in the areas that you need to clean. I'm just gonna take mine over to my parts washer and degrease the whole thing, top and bottom. I cleaned the whole valve cover in the parts washer, inside and out. I let it dry. I actually even blew some compressed air everywhere so that I make sure that all of the fluid that I used to wash it is out. If you only cleaned in the areas where the gasket goes, just let it air dry for a minute or two, it'll be perfectly fine. And if you did clean the whole thing, just make sure you blow compressed air, especially underneath here, so that you can make sure everything is completely removed. Now, the valve, co the valve cover gasket can only go on one way. The spark plug hole seals here are directional. They can only go into their groove in one direction. And if you try to put it the other way around, it won't reach. So, it can only go on one way, like I said. I like to start in the center. And then once the center is lined up, the rest will fall into place. Make sure you press it down. Follow the valve cover along. Perfect. Now, before we put the valve cover on the engine, there is one last thing we have to do. By the timing chain area where the timing cover meets the block, you'll notice there's a split right here. And we actually have to clean off any potential existing RTV and then apply new RTV. This is the timing cover and this is the block and it will not seal up with just the rubber valve cover gasket. I don't have any RTV here because it has most likely completely fallen off at this point or whoever did this last didn't put any and that explains why there was a leak. But regardless, we need to put more on. If you have any existing RTV here, use a razor blade or anything gentle that you have that'll scrape it off without damaging the surface. And now I'm gonna get some more RTV and add just a little dab of it. And you have to do this here as well as on the back side right there, you see the split. So let's do that. So with the surface degreased, just put a little dab on here. Not more than this, this might even be a little much, but you don't want it to squeeze out and get inside the engine. Let's do the same to the rear over here. Oops, a little much. If you think you put too much, you can just wipe it off with your finger. Now we are ready to put the valve cover on. As you set this down, make sure the gasket doesn't fall off from underneath. Slide it over the studs that are still here. There should be two on the front side that will help you guide it down into place. That's it, it's in. Let's put all the mounting hardware on, including these nuts for the brackets, and only then will I torque everything, because at this point, it's important to torque it down evenly. It doesn't matter where you start to put back the hardware, it just matters how you torque it. So I'm just gonna start. So I'm just gonna work my way around and put back all the bolts. Everything is on, so I'm gonna snug it all down, starting from the center bolts and working my way out. I'm not torquing it, this is not the final torque. I will get the torque wrench, but I just wanna run them all down so that they're nice and even. All right, let's get the torque wrench. Now that they're all snugged up, I will actually start on the outside 
All the outer bolts and nuts get torqued to eight foot-pounds. The inner two right here get torqued to 80 inch-pounds. That's 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. So it's a little bit less torque for the center ones, which is why you want to start with the outer ones. I like to start from the center ones and work my way out. I'm going to go here, go in a cross pattern, here, 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 and so on. I'm going to torque the two center ones to 80 inch-pounds. Again, that's 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. Then I'm going to go back around and double-check all of them because most likely with rubber gaskets like this, as you can see, the first few will loosen up as you squish down the gasket with the last few. Now let's go back around at 8 foot-pounds. This time I'm going to go in a circle, not in a cross pattern. And these two one more time at 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. There we have it. They're all torqued. Let's just re-secure the harness everywhere. Like I said, this clip for me is broken, uh, but if yours is not, well, re-secure it. I'm going to do the same to this rear one. All you have to do is slide it over and it'll lock in. And same over here. There we go. Let's put this harness back. Go get this ready for the ignition coils. It's bolted on with the stud and the mounting bolt. Make sure they're snug. Let's get this hose put back on here. Pinch the clamp and slide it on. Oops, clamp came off. Make sure that stays on. Just like that. Get the hose in the front put back as well. Before I put back all the ignition coils, I recommend putting some silicone paste on the bottom of them, right on the boot here, if they don't already have some. Not a lot, but this will help with two things. One, it'll seal it up up against the spark plug and ensure that no moisture makes its way there to corrode stuff. And number two, it'll prevent it from getting stuck. A lot of times from the heat, these rubber boots get stuck on the spark plugs over time. So this will just prevent that from happening. Slide it down all the way, and I'm just going to reconnect them as I go, make sure the connector clicks. I'm going to do the same thing to all of them. Start in all the mounting bolts by hand and snug them up. If you wanted to torque them, these get torqued to 80 inch-pounds. Lastly, let's put the engine cover on. And as always, with valve cover gasket replacements, I strongly recommend an oil change after this, just in case any debris made its way into the engine. Now let's just put the engine cover right back, make sure it lines up with both of the studs, and put the mounting nuts back on, tighten it up. There you go, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.